Hey, I'm Brian Van, SportbikeTrackYear.com, and today we're going to break down the TST Industries chain adjuster GP style lifter install on our 2018 STG Kawasaki Ninja 400 project bike. Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you what it takes to install the chain, the captive chain adjuster, right? The, the Kawasaki Ninja 400, just like the R3. And I showed you a different way to do this in another video that's, quite frankly, not as trick as this. That's why I decided to install these on the bike. The guys at TST, you know, we've communicated a little bit over the last year, right? They're doing a good job down there in Florida. They're really developing some pretty cool stuff, right? Nice presence in the industry. They reached out and asked if I'd install a set of these on the 400 as well as the R3. When I opened up the parts and I took a look, it was clear they know what they're doing. It's quality stuff. So I was excited to have the opportunity to work with a different brand, install them on the bike. Why would you put them on your motorcycle? Well, let's start there. If you're doing track days or you're racing a Ninja 400 or a Yamaha R3, you probably already know that every time you go to change the rear tire, if you haven't taken any measures to deal with it, these little caps, are just going to fall out on both sides the whole chain adjuster falls out and it is a giant pain in the ass it makes changing the rear tire no fun at all what i did previously as you can see here kind of kitty corner from each other i drilled through here and drilled a very small hole in the swing arm and, and i put just a little safety wire in there and that worked pretty good that wasn't bad these no longer fell out inside the swing arm itself you still had a lot of play here with the adjuster, so it would slide back. You're going to throw the axle through. That's kind of a pain in the ass. This kit comes with new end caps that simply have longer shoulders. You see how short that shoulder is? That's why there's nothing to hold it in there. They just literally fall up. They have longer shoulders, and then it bolts to this GP lifter, okay? So you need a, a GP-style rear stand. We're showing you a pit bull rear stand here with GP supports. And then... This bracket extends all the way to the swing arm spool boss. It bolts there, it bolts there. You've got your spring that's holding the chain adjuster in place. In this video, I'm going to show you what it takes to install it, and I'm going to show you a rear wheel change after having that in place. And if you've already changed the tire on your Ninja 400, you're going to see it was a whole hell of a lot easier. I did cheat a little bit, and I used my Pit Bull Pit Crew tire wedge, which helps to hold the rear wheel up in place, right? When it's on the stand, it's a little harder to change the rear tire because you can't throw your foot underneath it to kind of support it and lift it. On the ground, you don't necessarily have to have that. I will say that pit bull pit crew tire wedge is a really popular selling item for us. We sell a metric shit ton of those. Just makes changing the wheel that much easier. It's important to know, if in fact you go down this road, you need to have sorted out how you're gonna lift the bike. Right? You're going to need, you can't use a standard spool type rear stand. You need to have a GP style stand. The Pitbull one works fine. I have a Woodcraft one that we use as well. That would work with these, no problem. So there's a couple of options. Make sure you have that sorted out in advance. What do you need to do to get this project done? You need to be able to first lift the motorcycle at the back. Second, you're going to need to be able to support it from the foot pegs or somewhere else to hold it up once you remove the rear stand because you can't use the rear stand on the spools when you're doing this service because you need to access this boss right here. So you're going to be removing the spool from the bike and as you install this kit. So it's really important to understand you're going to have to support the motorcycle here. Beyond that, it's realistically just a tire change and a chain adjustment. Other important notes, when adjusting the chain, it's really important that you don't just adjust it when you have it sitting on these foot pegs. Why is that, you ask? Well, the swing arm, the angle of the swing arm is significantly different. When it's hanging from here, it hangs down a little bit more. The shock is gonna be pretty much fully extended, maybe even go through the top off spring. And that makes the distance between the counter shaft sprocket and the rear sprocket the shortest possible distance when that swing arm is all the way down, right? When you lift it up with the rear stand, it's going to actually compress the shock just a little bit 
And that is the area, that's the, the state you need to be in when setting the chain slack. Otherwise, it's simply going to be too tight. Okay, you'll notice I've already got the bike partially disassembled. I had another little project that I was working on, so I just decided to piggyback this install for the TST chain adjusters, right, for the Ninja 400. They were cool enough to send a set of these for the 400 and the R3. These are gonna solve a couple of problems. One of the biggest ones is going to be these OEM chain adjuster caps, they normally just fall off. We already have a video out there for both bikes where I kind of come up with this little safety wire solution to do that. And that really works pretty well. This is just an improvement on that. Another thing it does is it eliminates the spool from the swing arm. So you have less material hanging out and these can be damaged in the event of a crash too. That's actually fairly common. So it eliminates that problem as well. They include a spring that's gonna go on the other side of the chain adjuster here that is going to help keep it tensioned so you don't see it just kind of wiggling around like so. I need to pull the rear axle out and I'll go ahead and for the install, right, I'll show you how to put the tire back on all that good stuff. What I was actually working on is making this captive to the swing arm. I think that's a project that I'm going to tackle when we get back from Barber. I don't know that I want to dive into that right now because I need to get a 90 degree drill to do that. I used to have one, but my shit ass brother must have kept it. You gotta love that when somebody snags your tools and you don't get them back. Damn it. I'm also going to need to use the pit bull jack stands to support the bike by the rear sets because we're going to have to take the spools off to facilitate this install. So that's something that you want to make sure you, you keep in mind too. You have the ability to do that. Go ahead and get the jam nuts loose for the chain adjusters. Slide the stands up in place here. Max and I are getting ready to head down for the Barber finale for Moto America. Pretty excited about that. Hopefully watching our team capture a championship with Mr. Bobby Fong, Super Sport. And then we're gonna stay and ride on Monday, so I'm getting the bikes ready for both of us. I'll go ahead and lower this down now so the bike will be supported by the pit bull stance. I'm also gonna have to change the top supports on my pit bull stand for the GP style. This other method that I, you know, like I said, we already have a video out for this. This works pretty well too. It's not quite as trick as, as what they've done over here at TST. So that's why we decided to go through and show you this. Now, normally this is what would be happening, right? You go to change a tire and it just falls out. It is super, super irritating. This is the bike that uh, Max actually started racing this now. The last wear around that we did at Nelson Ledges, he rode this bike and uh, rode it pretty well. So this is moving forward going to be his bike. So we're going to go do this uh, practice day here after the Moto America round, have a little fun, and then we'll head back to the weir of GNF at uh, the end of the riding season here, October, and he'll ride this bike. So I want to get this thing all dialed in and ready for him to race moving forward. So just kind of take a look at that and see how they, yeah, that fits in there pretty tight. So no, all on its own, that's going to want to stay in there, right? Which is, is a big improvement in itself. Okay. But more than that, what ends up happening is it's held in place by that GP adjuster. I'm sorry, the GP lift. With the chain adjuster should be saying lifter. Okay, so those are going to bolt up right there. I'm not going to run everything down right now. I'll give you an idea of ultimately what that's going to look like. Oh, you want to take chain adjuster? 
slide the spring over. Go ahead and get your end cap here. Press the spring a little bit. Washer. The larger of the two. Nuts. Like so. Do the same thing for the other side. It's a relatively simple install. If you're able to change the rear tire, this is something you should be able to do without too much trouble. You know, the only real wrench in the works is going to be having to support the motorcycle without the spools. Right? And you can do that with like these pit bull jack stands. You could also do that with just a standard pair of automotive style jack stands. Take the spool off of this side. It is pretty, pretty snug. Now, one thing that I will stress that I think is going to be pretty important is you're going to want to have the wheel on and the chain tension when you tighten the rear fastener for the lifters. And I'll show you why right now. The hole up front is just a standard round hole. The one in the back you can see it's oblong a little bit. Why is that? Well, you know, these motorcycles, the way that they're manufactured, okay, there can be some slight variances and inconsistencies. So that's just there to make sure that you're going to be able to get this installed. When you snug this rear fastener, you torque this rear fastener, you're going to want to make sure that you have these held firmly against the end of the swing arm, okay, and that they aren't hanging out just a little bit, right? So we'll go ahead and Get the forward one torqued, loctited. We'll have the rearward one just kind of in there for now. I'll get the wheel in, get the chain adjusted, and then we'll go ahead and pull those back out, loctite it, and we'll be good. Okay, let's we'll start with the forward most. If you notice these fasteners, they look just a tiny bit different uh, than the other two. For whatever reason, there were only a total of two in the box. They made a little, little error over there. Shit happens. But I've got a lot of spares, so I just went into the hardware stash and dug it set out. Okay. I'm not going to use a torque wrench on this. Just good even torque. The Loctite will be a benefit there, too, to make sure that it does not come undone. Repeat the process here on the other side. Okay, now we'll be ready to slide the rear tire into position. Okay, uh, this is going to look a little different because I have the caliper off. Like I said, I was just doing a little preliminary look here, getting the, that bracket to be captive. And I ha have a plan, just need to get a, a by 90 degree drill to bring that all to life. I've also reversed my axle on this bike. 
I'm feeding it in from this side, so that way all the fasteners, right, the sprocket and everything, so when we're doing tire changes, it's all on the other side of the bike. Just makes it just that much more convenient, less likely that you make a mistake. So this is for sure gonna look a little bit different than what you would normally be doing to change a tire. Probably gonna make it more of a pain in the butt, but it's all right, we'll soldier through here. So as you notice now, we've got the bike lifted up by the GP style lifters. Okay, so I converted my pit bull stand. Works great with this particular bike. The height, the tire is nice. This bike's so light, it lifts really easy. Okay, very important. You want to make sure you set the chain slack while the motorcycle is sitting on the rear stand. Okay, why is that? Well, your swing arm angle changes. Okay, so as the angle changes, the overall length is going to change. The further down it hangs, the shorter it's going to be. So if you set your chain slack down there and then all of a sudden put it up on your stand, you're gonna notice, well, oh, it's really tight, man, and that's not gonna work out great. So make sure that you set the chain when it's sitting up on the stand. What I did is I basically just torqued everything down a bit and I wedged the rear axle against the adjuster blocks because I wanted to make sure I had these end caps held firmly against the end of the swing arm. You can see I don't have any gaps on either side, okay? What I did is I put something in between the sprocket and the chain, hit it a little bit while the axle was loose, then I torqued it down, the jam nuts, then pulled that all the way against the swing arm nice and flush. These rear fasteners were a little to the loose side when I did that. Torqued the axle a little bit, and then from there, I removed these fasteners and installed some thread locker on them and then put final torque. It's very important that you do that when these are flush against the back of the swing arm, okay? I set the chain slack and the rear axle alignment using a combination of things, right? I do like to take a little bit of a measurement. I'm using that. Motion Pro slack setter. Motion Pro chain alignment tool. I love to put this on the rear sprocket and you get a good, so I had the glasses on, get a good sight line on how the rear axle is aligned. I do utilize the marks on the swing arm. I'm gonna tell you right now on this Ninja 400, they are not super accurate. There's all kinds of play in these adjusters. You need to know that getting into it. So you wanna use a combination of the tools that I showed you and a little patience to really get that dialed in. Once you have everything set, I've got my chain tension where I want it. I've got the axle alignment where I want it. I do still need to torque this, but I'm gonna leave that untorqued because I do wanna pull the rear tire after we have everything done here to show you all the difference that having these in there makes. Now, I'm gonna to torque down the jam nuts for the chain adjusters because we're all good there, we're set. This requires a 12 and a 14 mil wrench. You wanna make sure you have these good and tight. Do that on both sides. Like so. Okay, let's go ahead and let's see how it works now. I am gonna cheat a little here and use my Pit bull pit crew tire wedge. Crank that bad boy up just so it's going to touch that right about there. Now, if you still have those stock adjusters and you haven't done anything with them to manage that situation. 
know, you already know what this, this turns into and it happens real quick. Those adjusters literally just fall right out. So you can see now the springs are keeping these in place, right? Which is pretty bitching. Okay. See that? So you have that working in your favor now and these caps cannot fall off. Go ahead and roll the wheel back into position. Like I said, when I started this video, you know, I got another little side project that it, I'm gonna start, probably when we get back from Barber, I'm gonna make that rear caliper mount captive against the swing arm. And I think that is going to really seal the deal in terms of making this tire change a little smoother than it is right now. And we, we don't need it epic, but I would like it to be a little bit better than it is. To be fair, I would say this is easier to do on the ground. Some people may agree, some people may disagree. Got my torque wrench here set to 72 foot pounds. Now what I like to do is I'm grab something. It could be a screwdriver, you know, it could be a wrench, whatever I have handy. Wedge it in like that, smack it a couple times, and go ahead and get the ratchet and just get it started. We will need the backup wrench on the other side, ultimately to hold the axle. Take that out once you've got enough tension on it, like so. And there's still enough room there to get the safety pin that I've got for that wheel. I like to hang that on the brake line. And that's what we're using for safety wire there. And you can see they definitely work. It's a cool little part. They're not super expensive. The quality is really high. We're excited to use these and run them at the track. I think it's going to be a big benefit, especially when I capture that, that rear brake anchor. That is going to make all the difference in the world. Changing this rear tire is going to be really, really easy. We have another set for the R3. When we get back from Barber Motorsports Park, we'll go ahead and get those installed and shoot another video. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments section of this video. I answer all those myself, and I'm here to help you get the same result out of your project. We do ours.